Today's lesson is about factoring trinomials by using a Punnett square. It is Common Core 9 through 12 standard A point SSE.2. For example 1, we're going to factor x squared plus 7x plus 12 completely. Now there's some steps that we need to go through every single time we factor a trinomial. Step 1 is using the powers of one variable, arrange the terms of the polynomial in descending order, unless it is already in that form. Now in our case, you're going to notice x squared is the highest exponent. 7x is the middle exponent, and 12 is our constant, so we put it at the end. So we're already in order. Step one, we have got it, okay? But that's something you need to check every time because sometimes it will not be in order. Step two is decide whether or not you're able to factor out a greatest common factor. Some of these trinomials have something in common in all three of them. If that ever happens, You've got to factor it out first before we use the Punnett square. So I start going, well, x squared, its coefficient is 1. 7x has a coefficient of 7. And then 12 is our constant. What is the biggest number that 1, 7, and 12 all have in common? Well, in this case, the greatest common factor is 1. So there's nothing we can factor out. But that's something we've always got to check. Because if we can, we got to before we start using the Punnett square. So now, since we've checked step one, checked step two, we're now ready to go ahead and use the Punnett square. Now, always in the top left is going to be your squared term, which in this case is x squared. In the bottom right will always be our constant, which in this case is 12. Now, in the other two squares, we're going to break up 7x. Here's the steps you go through to know how to break it up. First thing we do is take the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, and our constant, which is 12, and you multiply them together. Now that's going to tell us, well, that 12, we need the factors of it. You'll see why in just a moment. So the factors of 12 are 1 times 12 will give you 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Now why did we find those factors? Because 7x, we're going to either break it up into 1x and 12x, 2x and 6x, or 3x and 4x. How do we decide which one to use? Well, here's what you do. You look at the last term first. Since it is a plus, that means we're going to add these factors, and it also means they're both the same sign. The next thing is, since the middle term is positive, that means that when we make our factors, they're both going to be positive. So let's add these terms up and see what happens. 1 plus 12, well that's 13. Again, not what we want. We want to get 7 in the middle. 2 plus 6, well that's 8. Well that's pretty close. 3 plus 4, that's 7. That's the middle term. And 3 and 4, how do we know where to put them? Well, it really doesn't matter. Since the last term was positive, that means they are the same sign, and they're both what the middle sign is, which is also positive. So that means our terms are going to be 3x and 4x. Now, I've chosen to put the 3x in the bottom left and the 4x in the top right, but realize they could be either way. Since they're both positive, it really just does not matter but this is the way that I've chosen for this example. Now what we do is we factor out the greatest common factor any way that we can. So let's look at the columns first, and you're going to notice that x squared and 3x, well, they have an x in common. 4x and 12 have a 4 in common. Now when you factor out a constant, look at the x term. Whatever sign it is, is the sign of your constant. So that's the reason we have the plus. So this is one of our factors. It's going to be x plus 4. Now let's look at the rows. Well, x squared and 4x have an x in common. 3x and 12 have a 3 in common. And again, the x term is positive, which means the 3 is also positive. So x squared plus 7x plus 12 factors into x plus 4 and x plus 3. On example two, we now want to factor x squared plus 6x minus 27 completely. Again, step one says to put everything in descending order, where you're going to notice x squared, 6x, 27, we're already there. So skip step one. Step two says decide if there is a greatest common factor. Well, again, you look at the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x, and your constant. In this case, the greatest common factor is 1, so there's nothing we can factor out. But these are always things we need to check for when we factor trinomials. Now we're ready to go ahead and use the Punnett square. So x squared goes in the top left. Negative 27 will go in the bottom right. Now we've got to go, well, what are the factors we're looking for? Well, the coefficient of x squared is 1, and our constant is 27. So 1 times 27 will give us 27. 
One thing you'll notice is when we multiply these numbers together, we don't worry about the signs with them. That's the reason I only worried about the 27, not the negative 27. Now the factors of 27 are one and 27 and three or nine. These are our only two options. The only two things we can multiply together and get 27. So now let's look at our signs of our trinomial. The last sign is negative, which means this time we're looking for a difference. Anytime it's negative, we're looking for the factors that give us a difference of that middle number, which is six. Since we can have a negative of just one of them, we can think of it as, well, three plus negative nine is negative six, but it could also be negative three plus nine, which is positive six. Or we could have 1 plus negative 27, which is negative 26, and negative 1 plus 27, which is positive 26. Well, we're trying to get a positive 6 in the middle, which means the right answer for us is going to be this negative 3 and 9. So 6x is going to break up into negative 3x and positive 9x. Now we've got to use the Punnett square. So if we use the Punnett square, we're going to look for the greatest common factor of the columns first. And x squared and negative 3x have an x in common. 9x and negative 27 have a 9 in common. Since the x term is positive, it's a plus 9. Now let's do the rows. x squared and 9x have an x in common. Negative 3x and negative 27 have a 3 in common, but since the x term is negative, it's a negative 3. So that means x squared plus 6x minus 27 factors in 2 x minus 3 and x plus 9. For example 3, we're going to factor 3x squared minus 27x plus 60 completely. Now the first thing we do is we ensure that it is in descending order. You'll notice the x squared is first, the x is second, and then our constant. So we're good on that one. Step 2 is, is there a greatest common factor? Well the coefficient of x squared is 3, of x it's negative 27, and then our constant is 60. Is there a number besides 1 that goes into all three of those terms? In this case, Yes, there is. The greatest common factor is 3, so we've got to factor the 3 out before we begin. If you do that, you're going to have 3 times the quantity x squared minus 9x plus 20. Now, that's what we're going to use the Punnett square to factor is just that trinomial, the x squared minus 9x plus 20. So I know the 3 is there, but I'm just going to set it aside for now. So in the top left, we've got to put our x squared. In the bottom right, we put our 20. Now, how does that negative 9x break up into two separate terms? Well, again, take the coefficient of x squared, which in the parentheses is 1, take our constant, which in the parentheses is 20, and 1 times 20 will give us 20. The factor factors of 20 are 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. Now, which set of factors are the ones that we need to use to factor this one? Well, the last term is plus, which means positive, same sign, and the middle term is negative, which means they're both going to be negative. So the factors that we need to use to get a negative 9x, well, they all have got to be negative. So negative 1 and negative 20 would be negative 21. Negative 2 and negative 10 is negative 12. Negative 4 and negative 5 give you the negative 9 that we need. So that's our two factors. One will be a negative 4x and one will be a negative 5x. Again, the order of which box they go in really doesn't matter. So I've put the negative 4x in the bottom left, the negative 5x in the top right. Now it's just a matter of factoring out the greatest common factor. So negative 5x and 20, its greatest common factor is negative 5. The x squared and negative 4x, its greatest common factor is x. Again, why is the 5 negative? because the x term is negative. Never forget that on Punnett square. Whatever the x term is, that's the sign of your constant. Now, x squared and negative 5x, they have an x in common. Negative 4x and 20 have a 4 in common. But again, the x term is negative, so I factor out a negative 4. So the factors of x squared minus 9x plus 20 are x minus 4 and x minus 5. Now, of course, we have a 3 out front, so do not forget to bring it down. This is how you factor simple trinomials using the Punnett square.